When Christine McVie suddenly passed away in November of 2022, the public's interest in her contributions suddenly surged. But with her life shrouded in mysteries, the nagging question on most people's lips is, beyond being the beautiful blonde matriarch of Fleetwood Mac, who exactly was Christy McVie? In this video, we show you the side of the singer that the world hardly sees, including some of her rare photos. Without further ado, let's get started. On July 12, 1943, in a tiny English village known as Greenod, Christine Ann Perfect was born. Her father, Cyril Percy Absell Perfect, was a concert violinist and music teacher, while her mother, Beatrice Edith Maud Reese, was a psychic, a medium, and a faith healer. Throughout her life, Christine would be heavily influenced by both her parents' chosen professions. From her father, she got her talent in music, allowing her to outperform her peers. From her mother, she learned to stay in touch with her spiritual side, allowing her to tap into the vibe that made her a successful folk musician. When Christine was young, though, she didn't value her mom's profession as much as she did her dad's. Whenever the strange old woman would host scenes with her witch friends, Christina would cring, wishing she could just be an ordinary mother. As a child, Christine's maiden name was an unexpected source of pressure. Because her last name was perfect, almost everyone in her life expected her to act accordingly. Teachers would pass off jokes saying, I hope you live up to your name, Christine. Even so, these jokes didn't always land well. Much later in her life, when Christine married John McVie, she was only too eager to adopt his last name. Even when they divorced eight years later, she still didn't drop the McV. In fact, in a reversal of the original situation, Christine became the one who often joked about her name. She always said to her friends, I used to be perfect until I met John. When Christine was four years old, her parents introduced her to the piano. It was an unusual choice, given that her father was a violinist. Unlike some parents, Christine's father was not adamant that she follow in his footsteps. As such, the piano was the perfect tool for her to play around with. It was only after Christine turned 11 that she started to learn music professionally. The trigger was not her father, but her brother's friend, a local musician. For about five years, Christine trained classically. But then, when she turned 15, all of a sudden, she just didn't find classical music as cool anymore. Why? What happened was her brother, John, bought a songbook of the American rock and roll pioneer Fats Domingo. Christine suddenly fell for this modern, exciting sound. She also really got into the Everly Brothers. All this combined to make her a rock and roll fiend. Funnily enough, when Christine graduated high school and enrolled at the Mosley School of Art in Birmingham, her chosen course of study was sculpture. She had it in mind to become an art teacher upon graduation. For Christine, music was the dream of a past life until she started meeting upcoming blues musicians in school. At school, Christine met guitarist Stan Webb and bass player Andy Sylvester. Their genre of music, blues, intrigued her greatly. The two of them were in a band known as Sounds of Blue. Aware of Christine's music knowledge, they invited her to join them. Throughout art school, Christine worked with Sounds of Blue. She even got the chance to sing with Welsh legend Spencer Davis. Even though the band had potential, they could not make much of it. Before Christine graduated from college, they broke up. Unmoored, Christine's prospects suddenly looked very different. Because she did not have enough money to launch herself into the art world, her art degree started to gather dust. Her only option was to move to London and work as a department store window dresser, not the life she had imagined for herself, but what could she do? In 1967, when Christine was 24 years old, she heard that her old art school associates, Webb and Sylvester, were forming a new blues band known as Chicken Shack. Determined to break out of her basic lifestyle, she called them up and pleaded to be in the band. Webb and Sylvester, who were in need of a keyboardist anyway, were happy to welcome Christine. So began the rise of her music career. As a member of Chicken Shack, Christine did more than just play keyboard. She picked up songwriting and contributed her vocals too. She stayed with the band for two of their indie albums, helping them achieve a decent level of success. During this period, she matured as a blues musician and found out that she had a greater affinity for the genre than she had initially thought. In 1968, Christine met Fleetwood Mac bassist John McVie for the first time. Even though the band had many members, John contributed the Mac half of their name. The two of them were in bands that were signed to the same record label. Slowly, steadily, surely, a romance blossomed between the two of them. They got married soon after their courtship began. 
At the wedding, English rock guitarist and Fleetwood Mac member Peter Green was the best man. With two busy schedules ahead of them, the couple did not have time to go on a honeymoon. Instead, they partied all night at a hotel in Birmingham. Joe Cocker, who randomly happened to be staying there as well, got in on the fun. Though Christine and John were happy to be united with each other, there was a major problem. They both worked for the same label, sure, but they were still in different bands. What would happen if they both had to keep going on tour at the same time? Could they really be apart from each other that long? The answer was no, obviously. As a result, with conflicted feelings, Christine left Chicken Shack to become a full-time member of Fleetwood Mac. In 1970, Christine became a full-time member of Fleetwood Mac. However, she had previously contributed uncredited piano and backing vocals to the band. This time, though, she was coming on in an enhanced capacity. She would be the official keyboardist, female lead vocalist, and songwriter. Fleetwood Mac went on to become a major international success. It was during her time with the band that she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She was often described by the press as the prime mover of some of Fleetwood Mac's biggest hits. One of the band's most popular songs, Everywhere, was co-written by her and Lindsey Buckingham. While Christine sometimes got overshadowed by more colorful members of the band, true fans knew she played a more key role than most thought. As the matriarch of the band, she held the members together like superglue. Anytime they got cynical and wanted to break up, Christine was the one that brought them all back together. This is why when she retired from the band in 1999, it was a worldwide shock. After about 20 years of being a core member of Fleetwood Mac, Christine just couldn't keep it up anymore. She had developed a fear of flying and could no longer tour with the group. Musicians make most of their money from touring, and so she would be barring herself from a major part of the band's business. As such, she had no choice but to leave. Surprisingly, Fleetwood Mac did not break up in her absence. However, the band's operations dropped significantly. For years, they waned and waned and waned. Until in 2004, Christine triumphantly announced that she was returning to the band. Fans all over the world went into a craze at this announcement. The band will finally be going on tour again. What happened was that around 2012, Christine started seeing a therapist to help her conquer her fear of flying. She discovered just how much she missed the stage and wanted to return to it. With her back on the team, the band went on a very successful On With The Show tour. On November 30th, 2022, Christine McVie died of a stroke in a hospital at the age of 79. Prior to her death, she had been undergoing treatment for metastatic cancer. Her sudden passing caused an outpouring of love from the worldwide music community. In an official statement, Fleetwood Mac said that she was the best musician anyone could have in their band and the best friend anyone could have in their life. Christine McVie may no longer be with us. However, her legacy lives on. She will forever remain the strong core that held one of the greatest bands in the world together. She leaves behind an impressive body of work that will thrill fans for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.